welcome to our um, interview with Dr. Aman Kaur. Um, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me and have this conversation. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Jim. So before we get started, you have a, a fascinating journey, really, that touches so many different aspects of dentistry, from being a clinician to working in established groups to being an entrepreneur. And it's not fair for me to summarize your evolution of your journey, your professional journey. And um, would you mind spending a few minutes kind of just walking through for our listeners and for our viewers out there, if, if that would be okay, Dr. Kaur? Yes, uh, absolutely. Jim, you're so kind with always with the introduction. So um, a little bit about me. I started as a dentist and um, while I was working as dentist in a very large practice as my first role, I learned that there's a lot more to dentistry and the impact I could make just in, in addition to just the patients I'm touching myself. So from there onwards, I've been kind of in DSO space now a little over 15 years. And in this, these years, I've worked, got, been very fortunate to work with large organizations like Aspen, um, not-for-profit organizations, Samson, and Lone Peak. So um, at this point, I've gone through a little over half a dozen transactions for private equity for DSOs and have some put together. Um, DSO space feels like home to me, and I am so glad we have dental service organizations to lift the dental industry because we have been kind of always behind the, in healthcare. So uh, I am excited to be part of this wave. Yeah, thank you for the background. Can you talk a little bit more about your current venture, what you're doing right now? So currently we have a group. It's, uh, it started uh, two years ago, but it, was, it has stayed small. Uh, some owner dentists came together to, to form a group. I joined them earlier this year, and we have uh, currently around 17 practices in three different states. And uh, this is a very unique group. We are not, uh, per se, cookie cutter. This is how we do what we do. Uh, every, every practice has its individuality, and we serve some practices, and there are some groups we are affiliated with. So it's just our first year, and I'm looking forward to our growth. Great. And so do the individual practices retain their own identity or is there kind of an umbrella and name around them? They, they do retain their own identity. There are some practices we inherited as a group. So they were already under one brand and they are in that one brand, okay. but most of them retain their own identity. Great. Yeah. So the, the topic for today's interview or discussion is introduction, how you've changed your career and, um, into so many different facets. And so I think the first place to start is to talk about change management. And so uh, along your career, how do you, how do you instill a culture of change um, when you're, when you're in a position you are in a leadership position um, or whether you're in an established group practice, like what's your philosophy and your, your approach to that process? So Jim, I have learned and heard this word change now so often, and then I sometimes worry that change word has become cliche. Um, so when I say the culture we have, it's culture of innovation and growth. And I think that's a culture in not just unique to our organization, it's a culture in this industry and almost in the world right now. So in today's world, if we are not innovating, we are not growing, it means we are not even surviving. It, in the past, there was a saying, if you're not changing, you're not growing. But I believe if now you're not changing, you're not going to survive for very much. So with that said, um, if we look at our current workforce, our current sure. uh, consumer uh, group, they all want latest and the greatest. So change is inevitable. And uh, honestly, I personally don't uh, uh, endorse to hire people who are not, who don't thrive on change. There are a group of people who will say, I am fine with change. That, that's not enough. I need people okay. to thrive on change uh, because that's how we are going to grow and we are going to meet our consumers and a satisfaction, their demands, our providers, they want innovation, they want change. So change is inevitable and that's the only way to survive today. Yeah, a funny story about that. I, my son and I had to go somewhere. I recommended that we call a taxi versus doing like an Uber. 
and he had no idea like what that was and when he <laughs> did it he couldn't track it on the phone you know this right he made a phone call and they'll be hey i'll be there in 15 minutes but you don't get the instant gratification on your smartphone of where they are and so that was hard for him to just adapt to that little pivot so i hear you it's it's interesting thank you for sharing that so for leaders out there what are some watch outs or maybe a better way to put our pitfalls um, that practice leaders or owners can look out for or try to try to avoid or sidestep when implementing that culture change that you've spoken about? Um, I, it's not uh, so much of, um, uh, you know, we can call it pitfall. Uh, we get comfortable with what we know. And what we know is typically or mostly thing of the past that we have used over and over. We have seen it works. We are comfortable, we know it in and out. So sometimes our knowledge brings confidence and comfort in the things, in proven and known things. There's nothing wrong with that, but those things are kind of enemy of change. And then other thing is sometimes having too many options can also um, hinder the ability to make a decision. So knowing what you want exactly is so important and then Wedding, why do you want what you want? Sure. Once you know this is what I want and this is how I see it working out, your options will narrow down and then you can make a great decision. But to stay away from some of your comfort zone, because we all know our growth happens where we are, where we start getting uncomfortable. And uh, everyone wants growth because sometimes leaders have achieved what they wanted to achieve, but now they have. Uh, employees who want to go extra mile and achieve greater success in their personal lives. So we end up stopping their growth if we keep them in our comfort zone. So it's important to let others grow by getting yourself sometimes a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, thank you for speaking to that. Something caught my attention that you just mentioned earlier about having maybe having too many choices or options and people get you know par paralyzed by that, right? Yeah. Um, is there is there like a real world example that you can share? Because I thought that was really, I'm glad you spoke to that, where sometimes you have, instead of just having crunchy or smooth peanut butter, right, you have 15 different varieties and you go to the store and you can't decide which one to choose. So I don't know if there's a, a parallel it, in your world. <laughs> it, it's everywhere. You know, right now I talk about, lot, so we are working on uh, building our analytics department and there are so many analytics software. And uh, everyone can do the coolest, greatest thing. And some can give you data before it happened. A lot of, lot of amazing things. Um, but then at that time, you know, I, all that data is wonderful. But what am I going to do with all that data? What is the change I am trying to drive? Okay. So, um, so for me, I think in dentistry, the data softwares have, I, I think there's just a bit too many of them. Patient communication tools are too many out of out there, so uh, that's kind of in dental specific world. Sure, thanks for sharing that. So if we can shift gears and talk about um, technology modernization, you mentioned that your your patients are asking for to, to for you to have a more modern approach or or demanding that right that you advance with the times. Your staff as well. Um, you know, what has this always been your perspective or how have you kind of, how's your perspective changed towards technology throughout your career? So uh, I use, I leverage heavily on technology. We are a service industry and service industry means people serving people. And we are very fortunate to serve our patients with their very intimate need with within like, you know, inches of, of their face. So we are right. right in their face. And we, um, so there is, you know, we can, we can make people's sm uh, smiles great and change their lives. So with that said, there is a huge underbelly to this work we do, the documentation, how we get compensated for insurances from uh, all those things. Um, and what I've learned is there is always, anytime a human being is touching something, everyone has great intentions. No one wakes up and says, I'm going to mess up today, but we do, we get busy, circumstantial, sometimes, you know, patients bring information, it's not clear, all those things come in handy. So if we can leverage technology, we can eliminate some room for human error. 
Um, so I, that's where it started. And uh, what I've learned is we can make our team members' job so much easier if we leverage technology to remember things. Because I think uh, newer generation, they grew up in, on technology and technology has become very quick, very intuitive. You go through it, it walks you through it. But sometimes we just don't remember what to do next. Is it the right thing? So I like technology, using technology to give people prompts that think about this, think about that. So that's how I think about technology. I think if we can leverage on technology to remember our process and our protocol, we can get through our day very e easy and seamlessly. Yeah, well put. Thank you for speaking to that. So it's probably no secret to our audience here that you're a, a, a client of CareStack. And um, I have to ask this question and I, I appreciate you hearing me out on this. I represent CareStack. We're relatively unknown, right? We're pretty much a nascent company, been commercial about three years, competing against like two of the massive behemoths, right, in, in dentistry. And so I'm, I want to ask what probably everyone's thinking is, you know, why choose CareStack, a relative unknown when there are safer options out there um, that possibly are, are, are better known to, to, to your teams? So why I am with CareStack is um, I've been very fortunate to work with the uh, leadership group at uh, CareStack from the very early on stages. And the thing that striked me the most in those initial conversations while we were all coming together to see what this software should look like the biggest thing was why we have all these adjunct services. And there was a common theme that, you know, a typical dental software lacks a lot of these things like patient communication tool, um, online check-in, a lot of very, very basic things that shouldn't, one should not seek out outside of their EMR program. So I think uh, just with that mindset, I have seen that, CareStack has kept product development at the core of uh, what they do. And a lot of times I've seen some changes and improvements and enhancements come right on time or sooner. For me, I value those uh, things because I have been part of uh, softwares where we will tell them, hey, this doesn't work. Yes, it's in our works. It'll be there 2025, you know, <laughs> but right. uh, I, I may not even need that. So uh, that has been a big part of it. And other thing is uh, the folks behind CareStack support and training implementation. They are some of industry veterans. They have always thought about things, not just uh, delivering what you want, but kind of walking you through some of the best practices that exist out there, which is important to me because um, I know that everyone is wonderful during the sales process. No offense, Jim, I know you lead a large sales team, but um, it, what matters is what happens sure. after the sale. So, um, and I think that's where CareStack team really shines. They really walk you through implementation and as uh, problems happen, we know nothing's going to be perfect and they stand side by side you. So it's been good experience. Yeah, appreciate your candor, thank you. So one of the challenges, let's go towards, you mentioned implementation, you made the decision to go with CareStack. There's not a massive amount of users out there of the product, let's be, let's be realistic. Um, there, there's not a sophisticated group of people that know how to use the clinical commands and things like that. And I think you recognize this, you know, as part of the, your decision-making process. So how do you encourage em employees to embrace that change? How do you convince them? Um, was that a difficult process? Was it arduous? Was it not? I'd love for you to kind of expand on that for our listeners. You know, it's, it's, it, I'm glad you're asking. It's actually an interesting question. I have hired, um, we all want experienced team members and experienced team members come with an experience with uh, softwares which are readily available, very common out there. Um, but I am, and I have, I hired someone I really trust and has been um, a kind of very, um, very, um, very supportive of all the changes and has worked us through a lot of different things. And he came with the experience from 
using Open Dental. He swore by it that he said, this is the best software out there. So what I learned is from his experience with CareStack is everyone, no matter what software they're coming from, they are looking for better version of their known software. And um, I'm not biased. I have seen almost every dental software out there. CareStack is a better software. It is very intuitive, very nicely built. And if you put in a little bit work during implementation process to incorporate your daily processes, your workflows in CareStack, it, it can do wonders. So we have, uh, he has grown to love CareStack and we get great reports from CareStack. Um, I mean, everyone in CareStack's uh, team has been, we have weekly call if there is anything missing that we want or we don't know how to see this so we have been able to achieve those things. So those things have made uh, that change very easy. And more so, I will say that our largest work population is now millennial generation. Right. They want um, new software. Even if they're using iPhone, they are going through this software upgrade. Sometimes it ends up changing their entire world and they seem to like it. So it's been a non-issue, and I think they like a little bit different software. Yeah, thank you for speaking to that. So let's talk about implementation. You mentioned that word. And so there's a, a dentist that I came across who said, you know, I never woke up in the morning with a fistful of cash and said, you know what, today's a, a great day to do a data conversion and switch software, right? Yes. It's just the reality. It's a lot of work. And it's change management, everything we've spoken about. So can you just, and since you've been adding practices in CareStack, you've recently done implementations. If you could speak to our listeners and our viewers just about that process, um, some tips and tricks for success, uh, you know, some of the challenges you're going to face along the way, that'd be really helpful. Absolutely. So I think first is data conversion is gets challenging. It takes time and you have to give care stack advance notice. So I think make sure your timeline is matching with the data conversion because I know you all are converting people a lot. So, so having that timeline accurate is the key. Second thing what helps is while you all are working on this, ha assign your team members training modules. A lot of them are available in CareStack University. And if you're using an LMS program, have them uh, do acknowledgments through your LMS program so you know they have done it. Okay. That is the key. And we have developed some uh, kind of laminated sheets of the workflows initially that this is, this is what palette one looks like and this is what palette two looks like. So we have done some of those things that has been really helpful. And uh, in, I, I can't emphasize enough putting your work in into, the, into building your, so, your care stack software, building your workflows in it. And um, talk to implementation. They know different versions of people, uh, things to do. What a lot of times we, so something care stack offers is there are clinical palettes where you can add conditions and treatment. You can make that follow a patient's appointment cycle. So, and then you can number, add numbers to it versus just, you know, hey, this is all the conditions, this is all the treatment plan. Then it becomes like any other software that exists out there. That, that initial customization can go really long way. Yeah, thank you for speaking to that. That's, those are important facets to mention. So let's, um, if we can fast forward to today, you've been on CareStack and some of your practices like oh, two years, others less, you know, are more, more, more recent. Uh, but if we can rewind the clock and think about that two-year journey with some of these practices, what, what benefits are you starting to see from the software? So uh, the benefits, uh, I am, I'm a little clinical stickler, so I love the compliance and ability to document notes, conditions, treatment. It makes it very easy to see what is missed. Which, which I appreciate a lot more. And uh, so that's on the clinical side. And ability, we have a much larger compliance in having clinical notes completed throughout the day versus, you know, assistants sitting at the end of the day completing those notes. I think I, sure. I've never been a fan of that. So we have seen a lot of that right now. Um, 
patient communication has been amazing using care stack we um we do really well there is no there's no one really making confirmation calls we use robocalls so all those text messages uh, and we have individualized a lot of text messages regarding birthdays, anniversaries. So we enjoy a lot of that ability to, now recent one I love is ability to collect over text messages. We are really enjoying that. Um, during COVID, everyone incorporated teledentistry. I, I kind of like CareStack's uh, software the way you all have done it. It has made that virtual consultation really amazing. Uh, E-prescription, almost everything is there. So we have enjoyed that aspect of it. What else do we like? Um, yes, uh, give patient portal, we enjoy that a lot. We, uh, we use it religiously. So when you say patient portal, what, what kind of facet, like how does it work for your, your workflow? So I, um, we, uh, what I have learned that, um, Teams really like when patients have completed their paperwork before coming in. So they have been enjoying that. And then we have been using that portal to send patients um, their post-up instructions. So we, we do like that. Okay, great. Thanks for speaking to that. It's funny you mentioned the birthday announcements. I had a birthday last week. Many of my friends missed it, but my dental office that's on <laughs> care stack, I got the automated text message. So at oh, least they got okay. it right. <laughs> Yes. So it's great that you've, 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 you've customized it for your experience. Yes. Yeah. So as we kind of wrap up here, Dr. Kaur, um, you, you referenced it earlier on that CareStack is looking to innovate and make the product better. And I, I'll stand in front of the audience today and tell them the product tomorrow or a week from now is going to be better than it is today based on feedback from super users and experts like yourself. That's how we get better. So I know you have a wish list, and this is a great place to kind of share it with our audience. You know, what's on your wish list? Where do you want to see, how do you want to see CareStack evolve, whether it's with a, a feature or, or something we do as a company? I'd love to get your perspective on that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, and my wish list keeps changing almost daily, Jim. So uh, today on my wish list is, uh, and it has been for some time, is I, I want us to look at software, not what can we have to compete with the software next to us? Instead, what thinking about what these dentists' patients want. Because if you start, uh, CareStack start thinking about what their customers' customers want, they will take our worries away. And I do believe and I think that our future generation, our future customers are these new millennial parents and they love to track their Uber, they love to track their meal. So they like to be in driver's seat. Right. So I, I want that patient portal or something to be so engaging where patients come in, they know everything, they can control everything they're signing, they can look at their appointment time. If there is a wait, they can see their wait time and after what is done for them, I think there's nothing wrong with them giving patients access to their um, even digital x-rays and their documentation. Ultimately, it's patient's data. Putting them in real driver's seat and eventually getting to a point where maybe we could have an app or thing like that. I know in the past, everyone thought everyone wants an app. They don't need it. But this can be a constant loyalty program where we are sending them notification. If you know we have patient newsletter, they, they, all those things can be incorporated into the software. So one is that. Second uh, on my list is incorporating a little bit artificial intelligence into the okay. software because um, that that's again thinking for on behalf of us to manage our customers' demands, and that will be very helpful for us. And it can be in terms of uh, you know patients' propensity to stay compliant with dental treatment based upon different things they're going through in their life or how they came to learn about your dental office, what kind of treatment they accepted or not accepted. That's a very useful data. Uh, and third uh, I have is, uh, is regarding some of the RCM world. We use CareStex RCM service. It's been great. Uh, they do very thorough and fabulous job on verifications and how they go after claims, but building a little bit 
um, reports for people like me, kind of like very simple, stupid reports. Uh, so I, I think they're working on it, but sooner it can come, it'll be great. Um, finally, a CareSec has always had this super user group, um, but if they could have a formalized group, which can steer care stacks, future decisions, because there will be million things that care stack can do, but which ones and at what time and how to help them prioritize. Having that, you know, great group of people coming together and helping care stack prioritize and think through things that care stack has not thought about today. Um, I think that'll be great. Yeah, thank you for speaking to that. That was super comprehensive. And I know our co-founders, Dr. Mark Huzak, Abhi Krishna, and Kevin are listening and or watching this. And so you've got some great marching orders. So thank you. We'll hold them to task, Dr. Core, you and yeah. I together. It <laughs> sounds good. Well, thank you so much for being our guests today. I do want to let the audience know that Dr. Core is going to be a featured keynote speaker um, at the uh, Dentri Dent Dentist Entrepreneur Organization, that's a mouthful, the DEO. That meeting's coming up here in November. Yes. And that's just a, yeah, this COVID timeline goes so quickly, it'll be here before you know it. Um, yes. yes, that is true. Because uh, I think the summer event was, um, it feels like it was like just yesterday, but- um, Early June, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Can you speak just briefly to what you might cover, just so, so our audience can know what you're going to speak about just at, at a high level? Yes, but the, you know, everyone, I think most of the people know the EO group is, um, I, I think they're to, truly pioneering uh, how these groups can help emerging dental service organizations or emerging uh, groups, group practices who want to be DSOs. And I give kudos to uh, Jake. They have done such amazing job to make keeping all the content very uh, relevant and tangible. They hold uh, speakers accountable to make sure there is tangible information giving into the hands of the audience, which they can put and use next day. So that's, that said, that, uh, uh, I'm kind of more mainly covering about different way of DSOs can be structured. Okay. Ownership structures um, for a dentist level. And another group is how to, you know, everybody, it's DSO. People think that if I have five practices, I'm a DSO. It's not true. Uh, so what truly DSO means and how different, there are many ways to slice the, and dice this pie. So I'll be talk, covering more about DSO structures. Great. Thank you for speaking to that. Appreciate it. So thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you for everyone listening in or viewing in, whichever your method is. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope to have you back. Thank you, Dr. Kaur. Really, th thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure. Always great talking with you, Jim. Mm -hmm.